How's it going guys? White Rabbit here. As many of you probably already know, I've been planning on making a 101 crash course type of video about occult and satanic symbolism. And I actually ended up deciding that I'm going to break it up into multiple different parts because there is so much that we need to cover. And if I were to try to fit it all into one video, I would miss things and it would be a three hour long video. So I've decided to break it up into several different parts, which this is the first one. And what better to start off with than Saturn symbolism. So let's get into it. Now the first thing that you have to realize when studying the occult and the New World Order and all these different agendas that are going on is that there are all kinds of different branches of occult study and occult teaching. There are alchemy elements, there are satanic elements, there are witchcraft elements, there are new age elements, there's even Buddhist elements, Mormon elements. I mean. All of these things interweave and are interwoven into each other. And what it all comes back to is satanic symbolism. You have to remember, Satan wants to be God, desperately. And his fundamental mission is to basically trick people into worshiping him and or rejecting the Father, rejecting Jesus Christ. So when I use the term satanic symbolism, or cult symbolism. I'm not just talking about the Hollywood version of Satanists. I'm actually referring to all the different beliefs systems out there, which all at their core and at their fundamental teachings come back to Satanism. And what a lot of these elite groups worship derive from Saturn symbolism, because Saturn represents Hades and Satan, and it is a big fundamental belief that is present in all these different occult groups. And that's why I want to start off with it, because it is fundamental to understand Saturn symbolism and what Saturn represents to Satanists in order to arm ourselves with the truth. Now, to most people, Saturn is just another planet in our solar system that has rings around it, that happens to be the sixth one from the sun. Unfortunately, most people are unaware of how significant that planet is to the occult. Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun. It is also the third to last planet in our solar system. Now, I don't want to get too bogged down on numerology in this video, but I'll just quickly say that there are many ways that Saturn can derive down to 666, and that is one way. It is the sixth planet from the sun, and it is the third from last planet. Three sixes, 666. Six, six. Now the occult are heavy on numerology, but what I want to focus on is actually the symbology of Saturn in this video. So in order to understand why Saturn is so important to the occult, we first need to realize that the entire world has been worshiping Saturn for thousands of years. Since ancient times, people have gazed up into the sky and have admired the heavenly glow coming from stars and planets, and they attributed them to godly powers based on their effect on humans. Now before the flood, Saturn was regarded by all mankind as the supreme god and ruler of the kings. Now it's important to note, as I said before, that Satan really wants to be God. Occult researchers affirm that Saturn ruled the kingdom of Atlantis and became the divine ancestor of all earthly patriarchs and kings. Semitic civilizations referred to the god Saturn as El. The supreme deity was represented by a black cube. Ancient Hebrews represented Saturn with a six-pointed star, which later became the Star of David. Many esoteric researchers affirm that the name Ice, Ra, or El is the combination of the names of ancient pagan deities, Isis, Ra, and El. The Greeks and Romans also worshipped Saturn as a cruel deity. They believe that after he killed his father, 
Saturn became the ruler of the universe for untold ages, and he reigned with his sister Opes, who also became his wife. And he's often depicted as eating babies. It was prophesied that one day Saturn would lose power, and one of his children would kill him. To prevent this from happening, each time his wife delivered a child, he would immediately swallow it. Saturn has always had a negative, if not evil, significance. Esoterically, it's associated with man's limitations, restrictions, death, and decay. His name in Greek was Kronos, the ruler of time. And I'll explain how that's important later on. If you picture the Grim Reaper, well, the Grim Reaper originated from attributes of the god Saturn, because Saturn is represented by a sickle, the sickle which he used to slay his father. And with him also representing time, you can see how the Grim Reaper comes into play as your clock winding down. Now, the last thing I want you to keep in mind before we dig into the actual symbology is that Saturn is a planetary representation of a star. It is the black star. So, once you take all these things into account, the only logical conclusion that a person can draw is that Saturn is intimately connected to the ancient mystery religions of Babylon and is associated with Satan and Hades. So, let's get into the symbolism now. If you look at Saturn, on the North Pole, there is a persisting hexagonal cloud pattern all around the North Pole. It's some kind of storm or something, but it forms a hexagon that's bigger than Earth. This hexagonal pattern is extremely important to the occult. So let's examine this closer and break down all of its parts and also what it can be molded into. Now keep in mind while we're going through this that I'm not making any of this stuff up. I'm just explaining to you where some of these occult symbols come from and what they actually represent. So if we look at the hexagonal shape, we can divide it up into multiple pieces and form various different shapes from it. Right off the bat, you can notice that the hexagon easily forms six three-sided triangles. Again, we have six parts and threes surrounding, giving us, again, 666 symbolism. From here, we can begin to form a three-dimensional shape. By taking away three of these sections, you can see the formation of a cube. This cube represents a lot of things, but I want you guys to focus on the fact that this cube represents a prison, a box that we are trapped in, the matrix, if you will. This prison is the flesh that we are born into. It represents the sinful worldly dimension that we currently live in, that is manipulated and controlled to an extent by Satan. Just take a look at this giant glass cube that Apple put up. The Apple logo, if you aren't familiar, actually represents the original sin of Adam and Eve eating the forbidden fruit. That's why it's an apple with a bite taken out of it. That's what that represents. It represents the original sin, the sin that we are all now trapped into, the prison of sin, the sin, the flesh that we are trapped in. And when you take into account the fact that it's in the middle of a glass cube, which symbolically represents the prison, you have the original sin behind the walls of this cube prison. Do you get it? Now, you may not have ever noticed it, but there are actually people who worship these cubes, and they're found all over the world. They are embedded into our society. Everywhere you look, the Bible tells us not to love the world or the things in it. But Satan wants you to do the exact opposite. Satan wants you to love this world. He wants you to love earthly things. He wants you to worship the prison that you are in, the prison of the flesh. And that is why he deceives people into worshiping this cube and why he associates this cube or the cube with a positive message. 
Now, when considering this cube and its satanic significance, also bear in mind that a two-dimensional cube is a square, and a square is also found all over the place, particularly in logos. Now, if we draw a line connecting the corners of the square, we form an X. Now, what does this represent? Well, think about a pyramid. If you are looking down onto a pyramid from the sky, you see what appears to be a square with an X through the middle of it. And an X is another representation of Saturn. I hope you guys are starting to realize at this point that all these different symbols all coincide with each other and they all come back to Satan. So, some of you might know where I'm going with this. What was Jesus crucified on? He was crucified on an X. He was nailed to the cross, which is an X. Now, one leg of the X was extended because Jesus was crucified in a public display. And that's the only difference. It's still an X. Now the problem with researching these things is that a lot of people will lead you to conclude that this means that Jesus is a satanic belief. But that is not true. Jesus was crucified on the cross or on an X deliberately by Lucifer for several reasons. But the biggest reason, in my opinion, was for Satan to trick Christians into worshiping him. Now, if you think that the cross, which is an X, symbolizes Christ, you're not entirely accurate. It actually symbolizes Saturn, which symbolizes Satan. You need to realize that God does not need symbols by any means. He is above that. If you want to see a symbol that represents God, go outside, look at a flower, look at the oceans, look at a mountain, look at your dog, look at your neighbor, look at yourself, look into the sky, all around us. God made all of this. He doesn't need symbols. Satan does. And that's one of the main reasons why God commanded us not to idolize. You see, God is a whole lot smarter than Satan. And he saw this problem coming. Satan crucified Christ on a giant X so that when you go to church and you kneel down to pray in front of the crucifix, you are actually worshiping before a cross, an X, Saturn, Lucifer. You are worshiping before Lucifer. Now, I have some good news. In the scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. If your intention is to know Christ and to know God, then you will know God, and he will know you. Now, as is the case with most occult symbols, there are masculine symbols and there are feminine symbols. An X is technically a masculine symbol, just like a square is a masculine symbol. So keep in mind that the X and the square slash cube represent Saturn. Well, if you look at Saturn, you notice an interesting characteristic. It has rings that go around the planet. Those rings can be symbolized by a circle. A circle is feminine in the occult, and an X or a square is masculine in the occult. You see, Saturn represents both masculine and feminine energy to the occult. And again, when you see a cross, like the Celtic crosses that have a circle in the middle of them, it's more Saturn symbolism. It just actually encompasses the feminine into the masculine sign of the X, which creates a duality type of symbolism. Now, let's jump back to the three-dimensional depiction of the square, the cube, which derives from the hexagon. If we were to draw a star, and remember Saturn is the planetary representation of a star, if we were to draw a star using the hexagon, we will get a hexagram. It's exactly how it sounds. Hexagram comes from a hexagon. They all start with hex, which all mathematically represent six. The hexagon has six sides. The hexagram has six 
points, so on and so forth. But the hexagram is the symbol used in black magic. It comes from the Jewish Kabbalah, Jewish magic. It is a symbol of dark summoning. For the occult, if you want to put a hex on somebody, or if you want to have a spirit come forth, this is the symbol that you would use. It is not. It never has been. It never will be the Star of David. Nowhere in Scripture is David instructed to come up with a symbol of a star to represent him or the country of Israel. Solomon was a wise king, but he was also a dabbler in black magic. He had many wives, and those wives came from different cultures, and those different cultures worshipped different gods. They brought witchcraft to the marriage with them. It's all there in your Bible, folks. Go to 1 Kings chapter 11. But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Right there in that chapter, God is clearly explaining that Solomon married all these different women and embraced their gods. He was dabbling in black magic. He was worshiping false gods. All right, now again in the Bible, if you go to Amos chapter 5, verse 24, God is not in a good mood, but let judgment Run down as waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chien, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. You can't get any clearer than that, folks. God is talking about the star that Solomon was using and praying before, and conjuring up demons with. When Solomon had the temple built, he used people from a town called Tyre. Tyre worshipped a god called Baal. Baal is another name for Saturn in some occult groups. This hexagram is a symbol of Baal, or Saturn, not the Star of David. This is the seal of Solomon. It comes from the Jewish Kabbalah, and at that time it was Jewish magic, with a K. Not all Jews worship the same God. Israelis use this symbol because they are deceived, not because they are evil. In fact, some Jews are actually Satanists, but that's an entirely different talk. Not all Jews are Satanists. Jews are deceived, and they are deceived into using this star as their symbol, just as many Christians who idolize the cross are deceived. It's all very subtle. But Satan can deceive people very, very well. Alright, so hopefully now you can see that the hexagram, which derives from the hexagon, is actually a very satanic symbol that is used in occult groups to summon demons.
And what does it come back to? It all comes back to Saturn, which represents Hades. So again, still looking at the hexagon that is found on Saturn, which is where all of these things derive from, and keeping the same shape of this pentagram, we can see another familiar occult symbol that comes from these shapes. Now, to some of you, this might not make a whole lot of sense. You might not automatically realize what this is. But to me, this is where things get really interesting. This represents the square and compass. The square and compass of Freemasonry. Remember, the occult are obsessed with non-duality. Masculine versus feminine. The masculine and feminine. And I showed you how it can be represented earlier with a square representing the masculine and a circle representing the feminine. In terms of Saturn, this comes from the rings around Saturn representing the feminine and Saturn itself, which represents a cube representing the masculine. Now think about the square and compass. A compass makes a circle and a square, well, make squares. So again, you see the masculine and the feminine parts of the square and compass symbology of Freemasonry, which is also depicted and derives from a hexagon, which is found on Saturn, which represents Hades. Do you see how this all comes back? It all interweaves into each other, guys. Now, what does the square and compass have in common with the hexagram. They both come to a point. They both point both up and down. You've heard me say it before. In Satanism, they have the belief, as above, so below. Again, non-duality. Now, looking again at the square and compass, we also see hidden in plain sight the seal of Saturn. The seal of Saturn is two X's, and you can clearly see that the square and compass form two X's. Now remember, like I keep saying, Saturn is the planetary representation of a star. It is a false star, just as Satan is a false god. But that seal of Saturn, those two X's, represent Saturn, Satan. Remember, Satan comes as an angel of light. This all brings me to my next point, which is the columns in Freemasonry. The pillars, the two pillars, which is often depicted on either side of the square and compass. Everything that they do is extremely symbolic. All of their imagery and symbols have meaning. And now this is only a 101 crash course on Saturn symbolism. So I'll try and keep it as simple as I can, but just realize that this is the sun or the light shining through the two pillars. It's a representation of the Antichrist. It also has a numerical significance that explains this. If you lay it out with the seal of Saturn, the two X's between two pillars, you get the Roman numerals I XXI. This forms two different numbers. The IX makes 9 and the XI makes 11. Why is this important? What does this signify? 911. Well, in order to understand what they represent together, we first need to understand what 10 symbolizes to the occult. 10 is comprised of a 1 and a 0. In the occult, 10 represents God. It represents a perfect number. It represents non-duality. Think about binary code, where you write code in nothing but 1s and zeros. A 1 represents on, and a 0 represents off. Yes, no, true, false and so on and so forth. So when you have the one and a zero in the occult, it is Satan's way of copycatting, if you will, 
the alpha and omega, the first and the last. And Satan represents that number with a 1 and a 0. So in the occult, a 1 and a 0 represents God. Now, when you have 9 and 11 next to each other, what that is signifying is skipping God, because 9 is one less than 10 and represents the fallen or the fallen angels, and 11 is one more than God. It represents being above God, skipping God and becoming godlike yourself. So, when we have 9 and 11 next to each other, it is surpassing God, the number 10. So going 9 straight to 11 and skipping 10, it represents the Antichrist. Now sometimes when you're researching the occult, you will notice on some of the artwork for Freemasons, you will see instead of the square and compass, a middle pillar. They refer to that pillar as the 13th pillar, and this is why. 9 plus 11 equals 20. This represents the Antichrist. Jesus is referred to by the occult as representing 13 because he had 12 disciples, which made him the 13th. Satan and these occult groups want to bring about the Antichrist, and the way to do that is through creating a forgery of what Jesus did. And when you take 13 and add it to 20, you get 33, as in the 33rd degree of Freemasonry, as in the Illumined Ones, 666. The funny thing is, Satan thought he was being coy by crucifying Jesus on a cross, which as we have already discussed represents an X, when in reality, remember, he was crucified between two others, creating this 13th pillar symbolism, this stargate or wormhole symbolism, rupturing the fabric of space and time. He escaped the cube when he died on the cross. Jesus dying on the cross was a lot more significant than people realize. Now this is a lot more complicated than I want to get into in this video, I just wanted to mention it here. But 9 and 11 also can represent gene manipulation, or in other words, creating life or prolonging life without God, and directly goes against God's wishes. Now if you also were to take into account that the 9 and 11 derive from the seal of Saturn, which represents law and order, and 9-11 can also be attributed to gene manipulation or medicine, and Saturn is associated with Hades, which is a fiery hell, it makes sense that you would call 9-11-9-1-1 on your phone if you were faced with one of these three dilemmas. You can either get the police, which elicits law and order. You can call to report a fire, or you can call an ambulance and get medicated. So in other words, in case of an emergency, we are numerically instructed and reinforced time and time again to call upon the Antichrist to save us. Just food for thought there. Now if we jump back again, to the original hexagon shape that we get from Saturn, we can also form two S's from the hexagon, and these two S's can again represent many things. They can represent lightning, or they can represent the serpent, and the serpent represents time. You can also see another symbol that represents time present in the hexagon by way of the shape of an hourglass. So we can clearly see how Saturn has its associations with time, but the serpent also represents ascension to the occult. So what am I getting at now? Well, 
Some occult groups believe that there is actually more to Saturn than just another planet in our solar system. Some believe that fallen angels actually reside there. Some believe it is a literal Hades. Now, I have no idea if that's true or not. I'm just telling you what they believe. And they also believe that there are pressure points all over the globe. And the energy from these pressure points all over the globe can be harnessed in a way that creates a wormhole or a gateway or a stargate or whatever you want to call it that creates a kind of immediate connection between Earth and Saturn, between this world and the next, between our dimension and their dimension. And the way that this is accomplished in theory is by smashing together light particles and ripping into the fabric of space and time. And this is the heart of what all of these symbols represent. That is the main secret that the occult harness is the ability to create these wormholes. And the instructions for this are depicted in their symbology. And to top it all off, we have Saturn, which on a two-dimensional plane can be viewed as a circle within a circle, representing the Illumined Ones, which makes the number 666. So as you can see, Saturn has all this different symbolism associated with it, and that is why the occult love Saturn so much. It's because you can derive all of these different meanings from it. Saturn is a symbol, and the occult are trying to bring about the Antichrist by manipulating Jesus dying on the cross. Now, the problem is, a lot of people researching the occult will look at these three crosses, see the symbolism there, and associate the three X's to symbolizing 666. And that is true, but that is an occult interpretation. And this is a very distinct difference. And if you get nothing else from my video, you need to understand this. And that is that God does not use man-made symbols. Okay? The reason I say this is because the occult, or at least several of the occult groups, derive 666 simply from these three crosses. When in reality, the symbols that God made are far more important than the man-made symbols. So it's not the cross where they should be getting their numerology from, but the person on the cross. Six is the number of a man. There was a man to the left and to the right of Jesus on the cross. They both represent a six. But Jesus was God. So he does not make the 666. He breaks through that. And when you have the seal of Saturn, which symbolizes 9 and 11, and it is missing the 13th pillar, Jesus did not represent an X. He represented a 10 because he was God. He connected the 9 and the 11. He merged the two worlds. He created a gateway. He escaped the prison. He escaped the cube. He went beyond this dimension. And that is why it is so significant that Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven because he was not confined by the terms of this dimension. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I hope this makes sense to you guys. It's pretty incredible stuff when you think about it. So there you go, guys. There is your crash course on Saturn symbolism. I tried to cover all the basics. I might have missed a thing or two, but hopefully it was still very informative for you guys. If you all would do me a huge favor by sharing this video, I would truly appreciate it. God calls us to expose evil and to expose secrets. 
especially secrets of evil men. We need to expose Satan's lies. And I think that hopefully this video will be a good start for most of you. As always, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Thanks and God bless.